I'm absolutely happy because that's the best I can give her. To have all the entertainment of the wild baboons. I mean, look, I'm also happy to be able to sit here and sleep here and look at this instead of sitting in an old age home. Isn't it wonderful? I mean, it's, it's, it's such a special thing for me and for her that makes me totally happy. An up and down day at K is drawn to a close by the African sky. As is the next, and the next one after that. The weeks continue to roll by as the changing seasons roll in. Over the course of 12 months, the welcome rains come and go, breathing new life into the African bush. The sun returns quickly to push one year into the next. The seasons may come and go, but Stephen does not. His routine remains the same. But tonight, just over a year after Rita and Bobby moved upstairs, everything is about to change. We were having a really nice evening up at the Mountain Lodge. A couple of the volunteers had bought some special food. There was a really nice dinner that they were cooking. A couple of people went up on the balcony and um, said that they saw fire. It was Rita's house. Um, just immediately grabbed the fire extinguisher from up here and ran. See that upstairs where Rita was was it was gone and there wasn't much we could we could do up there and Rita didn't appear and um, yeah we rescued what we could and. Once the fire was pretty much out, they searched the area where they believe Rita was, and one of the things which was stuck in my mind was that um, there was a little rat that was underneath her her body, and it was still alive, and it was like she she saved the the rat. Yeah, sorry. Rita Milio died on the 27th of July, 2012. She was 81. Her remarkable baboon story ended exactly as it began, side by side with her beloved baboon, Bobby. The downstairs clinic at Care the quarantine area and nursery night quarters were all destroyed and some baboons sustained horrific burns as their cages melted. The charred remains of Rita's house now stand ghost-like as baboons go about their daily business. Rita is laid to rest in a humble grave next to those of her favorite baboons. She and baboon Bobby share the same coffin. To this day, the cause of the fire in which they died remains a mystery. Rita clearly hadn't finished her work. It's a tragedy that she died in that way, uh, in very much the same way that Diane hadn't finished, Diane Fossey hadn't finished her work. But in one sense, Diane's death focused more attention on her work and inspired many other people to continue it. So maybe that's what will happen with Rita. And perhaps eventually we will have a, a general perception of baboons that is positive.
People like Rita are desperately important because, you know, as humans invade more and more of the space of, of wildlife, then you get more and more orphans, you get more and more displaced individuals, and you desperately need people to take care of them and look after them. Her legacy is that amazing sanctuary and the lives that she has saved, the lives that she has improved. She didn't just rescue them, she returned the baboons to the wild. And people said it couldn't be done, that it was madness, that they were mad to do it, and yet they succeeded. Rita's work has to go on, and the baboons need a new fighter for their cause. She only ever trusted one person to take over from her. Stephen is more than capable. With Rita's death on his mind, Stephen comes to a happy place to think and check up on the last of Rita's troops that he released back to the wild. Yeah, just want to see them and make sure everyone's okay. So. The location is kept secret for the baboon's safety. Now free from human reliance, the troop stays away. In this vast wild area of bush, they could be anywhere. But the signs are good. They have definitely been this way. There are baboons in the area. But Stephen needs to identify them to know for sure that they are care baboons. I can hear them. Yeah, that was Bess. That was Devereaux. That's Chuck. We already had Sally and Ezra. Yeah, I always think of, of Rita. Rita would be happy. She must be looking looking down and seeing her baboons that that she raised and the rehab method that she put together and release method and seeing that it works. And that's what keeps me going. I can go back to the center happy and know that keep doing this, get them ready for the bush, find release sites, because it works. It's, it's all worth it. I think those who are considering reintroducing um, rare species closely related to baboons into the wild could learn a lot from the, the experience that Rita Milio and her co-workers have in building social groups and finding suitable habitats and the political side of, of discussing with the authorities and the farmers uh, that, that this is important and worthwhile, uh, then people will turn to the experience of Rita's project um, for how to do it. Something else that is quite remarkable has also happened. From the moment care was established, such is the vilification of baboons that no South African volunteer has ever set foot here until now. Deborah grew up in a local community. She's fully aware of the hostility many people have towards baboons. I used to be scared of them because I used to see them from a distance. So I was like, I wasn't sure if maybe they were going to grab me, attack me. But as time goes on, as I was here, I started to love them, even to be close to them, to touch them, groom them. So it was wonderful. There are those who don't understand exactly what I'm doing. They're like, why are you working with baboons? I mean, they are alpha, they are, they are aggressive. But then this is something that I really hope to change because we really need to conserve them, to preserve them and to, to encourage people to learn, to visit these places, to know what is really happening here. I think that would be wonderful. The role that baboons play in, in the natural habitat, they're not just ornaments, they're, they're part of the ecology of the habitat in which they evolved and which evolved around them. So if you lose the baboon from that habitat, then all the ecological jobs that baboons do don't get done. You know, we've got to protect environment so that these, these animals can then have a chance of being released back into the wild. Like many people who, who have died, who you wish you'd said things to, um, uh, yes, you'd like to just express your appreciation for what they've done and, and um, admiration for their determination and strength of character and all those things that make someone like Rita special. Uh, no, there'll never be another Rita Million. Thank you. Because, yeah.
No, she was, she was unique. Everything put together was unique and perfect for the baboons and for starting this and for, yeah, for care and for, for baboons. It, it took someone unique like Rita to, to, to start it off and get it going and now we just have to keep it going. The main purpose in my life to show people that baboons can be beautiful. I think I had a hand in that, and, and if I only lived for that, I think I had a good life. <laughs>